This is what you're gonna build by the end of this video series. Welcome to this video series on how to build a Discord bot. This is the first video in the series. And what we're gonna be covering in this is the technologies we're gonna be using. We're gonna get set up with those technologies, start building out a project. We're gonna create a Discord app with the Discord website on their developer portal. And then we're gonna start trying to connect our code to a Discord server and see if we can listen to messages just to test that out first. After that, we're gonna get into the next video, which is gonna be about parsing the Wordle results. I'll explain what a Wordle is if you're not familiar with that and how we can implement the logic to actually fulfill the needs for this bot that we have. And then in the next video after that, we're gonna talk about data storage because in the video before that, we're storing the Wordle results in memory in a variable. And that's not the best way to approach this because if you stop the bot from running, you lose all that data. We need a more robust solution and that's where we're gonna implement a database with some tables and some relationships to have some fun learning about that and implementing that for this bot. And then in the last video of the series, we're gonna be going through deployment for the bot. We want this bot to be able to run at all times so they can capture people's results whenever they send them into the Discord channel. So we're gonna deploy this to a host somewhere and have our bot running in production. Now, before we get into the weeds of all this, I wanna share a resource that I built out for you so that makes it easy for you to get started right away and you can use as a reference. That reference is this repository that I built out in it. It's gonna have all the source code of the finished bot so that you can use it as is if you'd like as a, and then start tinkering from there. Or if you'd like, you can go to the readme, which has a step-by-step -step guide of everything that we're gonna cover in the video series. So be sure to check that out. Link will be in the description below. All right, so let's talk about the technologies we're gonna be using in order to build this Discord bot. First of all, we're gonna be writing our code in JavaScript or TypeScript, and we're gonna be using bun.js as our runtime for that code to run on. After that, we're gonna be using the Discord JS library that helps simplify our means of interacting with the Discord API for us via that SDK. Then when it comes to database and storing the data for the bot, we're gonna be using what's called libsql, which is kind of like SQLite if you're familiar with that, and it's made by Terso. Now for our code, our bot to interact with the database to simplify that whole approach, we're gonna be using what's called the Drizzle ORM, or Object Relational Mapping. So with the technologies understood, let's understand what the overall architecture of the application is going to be for this discord bot well obviously we're going to have our own discord bot running on a server over here and then it needs to connect to and talk to and listen to events from discord or whatever server that the bot gets installed in over here in addition to that our bot is going to need to talk to the database and that's going to be hosted either somewhere else or you can actually have it when it comes to sqlite and libsql it can just be a local file next to your application wherever it's being hosted and run it if you'd like all right, so let's get started building and setting up the project for this. Now, what I would recommend is either you fork the repository, which will have, again, the link in the description below, or you go and start creating your own repository under your GitHub account, um, under your name, give it whatever name you want the bot to be, and then you can start following along that way. From there, open up the project locally on your machine as you normally would, or if you don't want to use a repository, you can just open up a folder on your machine. I personally am going to be using Visual Studio Code on my machine connected up to my GitHub repository. So if you wanna follow along exactly how I'm doing, that's how it's gonna be done here. All right, once you've set up your project, you should have something like this, put a readme in there. If you've created a repository and cloned it locally, it's gonna look like this. In my case, it's called Discord Bot Demo. Now, the first thing we need to get going is in this environment, if you don't already have Bun installed, we need to get Bun installed. And if you have Node installed already, we can use NPM directly to install Bun. If you don't, you can go to Bun.js's website to figure out how to install that based on your operating system. So for here, I'm gonna NPM install hyphen G for globally Bun, and that way we have access to Bun for the rest of the project. So Bun has a built-in command in their command line tool that you can initialize things called Bun init. If you step through some of the prompts here, let's make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna use the default name there. We're gonna have, yep, that's the entry point. And there we go. It set up everything for us. Did a quick install of any dependencies we needed, which is none right now, but at least set up the package JSON. Well, we do have dependencies. We have bun and then TypeScript because bun lets us use TypeScript out of the box, which is very, very nice. Now, next thing we're gonna do is create an SRC folder or source folder for our code. And in there, we're gonna move the index.ts file for us there. Next, just to make sure everything's working properly, we're gonna try and run the application now. We're gonna say bun run src index.ts and we should see the hello 
the uh, bun print out to the screen there. All right, so now that we have the project initialized and set up, we need to first get an app added into Discord via the Discord developer portal. The link for that will be in the readme of the repository, but also in the description of the video below. So once you're signed into your Discord account and you, after going to that link, you should see a view like this and you wanna click on the button in the top right-hand corner, new application. And here you need to give your application a name. We're gonna call it Wordlebot. Check the box and click create. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the left-hand side of the menu here and click on installation. From there, we wanna look at the installation context section and uncheck the user install. Then we're gonna scroll down to default install settings and look at the guild install section here. We have a drop down. We want to select this drop down and choose bot. Once we choose that, we'll see that there's a permissions drop down that pops up. We're going to select that and we're going to select only the permissions we need. We don't need more permissions like administrator. You want to limit the access that this bot has to servers to only what you absolutely need it to have. So in this case, we're going to want it to be able to read message history. And we're going to want it to be able to send messages too. Last but not least, we want it to be able to view channels, right? So that it can see which channel people are sending Wordle results in. So we click on view channels. Once all that's set, now we can click in the bottom right hand corner, which is behind my head, the save changes button that pops up here. Now go over to the left hand side menu and click on the bot option. And then you want to scroll down to message content intent section. And we want to enable this so that the bot can receive message content in most messages. From there, we'll click save changes again. And now last but not least, we want to get a token so that our code that's building out the logic for the bot can access the Discord server and API that this bot gets installed in. So to do that, we go to the token section here. We're going to click on reset token so it generates a new token. And we're going to say yes, do it. In some cases, if you have two-factor authentication enabled, you're going to need to add that code into here and then click submit. All right, so once you click submit on that, you'll notice that a token is now visible on the screen. <gasps> Don't worry, if you accidentally expose this, you can always reset it again. But in this case, I'm gonna copy it and save it for later. You should do the same, save it somewhere safe just for a moment until we get to use it in the code and the app that we're building out. So heading back over into Visual Studio Code or whatever editor you're using, I'm gonna open up a new tab and actually paste the value of the token in there so that it's saved that way. And now we're gonna start setting this app up so that it can connect to Discord for this bot. First thing we need to do is add the Discord JS package so that we can leverage that and make it a little bit easier for interacting with the Discord API. Instead of having to manually write API requests to the Discord API, we can just use the SDK that is through this package. So we're gonna say bun add discord.js. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create a .env file so that we can store this Discord bot token. And we're going to give it a name of Discord underscore bot underscore token equals. And then I'm going to put it in quotes and I'm going to show you why in a second. And then we can paste in the value of the token inside of those quotes. And now you notice how that's hidden. I purposely do that for these recordings or if I'm live streaming so that other folks, I don't accidentally expose the value of this to other folks in there. You can use an extension called cloak, which is at the bottom of my tab here of VS code, which will hide and show, click it again. Now you can see it, hide it. And there you go. So just a little quick tip for anybody that might have a need for that as well. Okay. So with that saved in my environment file .env file, I closed out the empty tab. And the next step for us is to open up index.ts in the SRC folder. And we're going to change the code here now to start using that token and connect to Discord. So I'm going to just replace this code and copy the code from the repository that I wrote already, but I'll explain what's going on here. So first thing we're doing is importing the client events and gateway intent bits from the Discord JS package. Then we're going to initialize a new client that's going to connect to Discord telling it what intents we need to have access to. So we want to be able to access guilds, which is servers, messages within that guild or server, and then message content for those messages. Once that's initialized, we then set up event listeners. So the first one we're going to listen for is when client is ready, meaning this code, this bot has successfully connected to the Discord server that it's been installed in. So in this case, it's going to be our Discord server that we're going to use to listen for chat messages in there. And then I send a message just to log out that that successfully happened. After that, we set up another event listener for when messages are created. 
that's going to tell us whenever a message pops up in a text channel that we give this bot access to, you'll be able to read the contents of that and who the author was that created it. Okay. And after that, to set everything off and actually initialize the connection, we're going to call the login function on that client object, passing in the token that we set up in the environment variables. Now, one thing you'll notice if you are familiar with Node.js and JavaScript based applications, I'm able to just natively call out process.env. In newer versions of Node, you can start doing that. In older versions, you can't. But in Bun, you can also do this like this as well without having to use a third party package that will handle your .env files and loading those into the runtime. So that said, we await for that as well, because that's a asynchronous process that happens and then we'll be good to go. So with that said and all set up, we should be able to run this and test it out and see what happens. So in order to test this out, we're going to bring back the terminal again and we're going to run bun run source src index.ts. And there we go. We can see we're logged in as Wordlebot. So it's the name that we gave our application in the Discord developer portal, that is. And we're good to go. So it's listening now. Now, the key is we need to make sure this is running because now we need to go install it into our Discord server that we want to give it access to. So let's switch on over to that. You're going to click on the installation option in the sidebar menu and look for the install link section. Here, you're going to find a URL like the one here. It's going to probably be different for you based on your client ID. And you're going to want to copy the value of this. What this does is when we go to it in our browser, we're going to be able to install it in a particular server that we have access to via our Discord account. All right, so you're going to open up that link in your browser and you'll get to a prompt like this. You'll have an option to select which server you want to add it to. In this case, I'm using a test server that I have and you're going to click continue. After you click continue, it's going to prompt you for what permissions you want to give the bot access to in your server. And then you make sure that those are checked, the view channels like we saw before when we were configuring the bot, read message and send messages. And then we're going to click authorize once that finishes going through and you might be prompted to make sure you're not a bot that's trying to add this bot which is quite funny to me uh you'll see a message like this success that wordle bot has been authorized and added to the your server with the name that you had and you can close this window or tab so now we can head on over to the discord server and test out if our bot can read and log out the messages based on the code that we wrote for it so far. Okay, I'm over in my Discord server now, the Clarkio test one that I added the bot to, and I recommend creating a separate channel that can capture all the Wordle results from people that are gonna play it in your server, and then that way the bot knows which channel to focus on, okay? So I have the Wordle channel here. What I'm gonna do is send a message and see if the bot, which is still running in Visual Studio Code, logs out the messages that it wrote. So we're gonna try this out. Hello, YouTube send that in and then we're going to head back over to vs code to see if it was logged and now back over into visual studio code looking at the terminal we can see it did log out that clarkio test account said hello youtube so the bot is up and running and working we have things ready to go and start building out the actual logic for this wordle bot that does it for this first video in the series on how to build a discord bot in the next video we're going to talk about what a wordle is because you might not know what that is at all and we need to know what it is because we're going to also implement the logic for parsing Wordle results from messages received in the Discord channel. And from there, we're going to figure out who's the winner because there's going to be multiple players and whoever gets it in the least amount of attempts is deemed the winner for that particular Wordle of the day. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. Stick around for that. But that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.